Last fiscal year, uh, we did this program with the Pacific Library Partnership and with some of the libraries in the NorthNet library system. And then um, it became so popular that we've expanded it statewide this year. So these are the pilot libraries and the mentor libraries from the fiscal year 1617 grant. So 11 pilot libraries and four mentor libraries. The grant also paid for an educational services coordinator who helped the mentor libraries and pilot libraries. And a result of this was the creation of a toolkit with best practices that's available on our website. We'll put the URL up there in just a minute. What we learned from all of this is it takes about 18 to 24 months for a library to create a successful partnership with schools for library cards. And what we know is that these partnerships look completely different from library to library. And by, whether you're partnering with an individual school or with the county office of ed, it can really look significantly different. And the most embedded way to do it is through um, actually receiving the school data and importing it directly into your ILS and issuing either physical or virtual cards to library or to students, or it can be as simple as just going in and making an informal arrangement and handing out uh, library cards during back to school nights. So, um, so what we found from year one was that there were so many libraries statewide that were interested in this that earlier this year we did a statewide survey. So to put this in perspective, um, there's 181 public library jurisdictions in the state of California. Half of them responded to this survey, which is pretty amazing, I think. And what you can see is that 54 of those who responded are currently collaborating with schools on issues relating to library cards. And then the top reasons why libraries are not is because the lack of staff time and the difficulty maintaining ongoing relationships. And I think that that last sentence is really important about maintaining lasting relationships. And that is the focus of our year two grant is where we're going to help libraries create metrics for success so that we can demonstrate the value of that partnership so that it can be sustained. So I think the other thing that's interesting, there's a little typo in there. It shouldn't say information agreements. It should say informal agreements. Um, but 44 of those 54 libraries are doing this informally, and only 15 libraries are doing it in a very formal way. And I think that that speaks to there's a lot of different ways to form a relationship or a partnership with schools. But 49 of those libraries have not done any evaluation. And I think that that's where this upcoming year is really going to help with that. So, um, so there's a URL if you want to download the implementation toolkit that we made. And uh, this upcoming year, we'll be making another toolkit, which we're going to be calling the Sustainability Toolkit. And uh, already, we have this year uh, 45 libraries signed up to participate in this statewide. So we've got nine mentor libraries and 36 pilot libraries. So uh, Lana and Nancy are going to talk. They were part of the 1617 grant cycle. And Nancy uh, will represent uh, the, a pilot library's perspective from San Jose Public Library. And Lana is going to talk about Oakland as a, as a mentor library. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Nancy Donnell from San Jose Public Library. And the city of San Jose has 20 school districts. Of those 20, San Jose Public partnered with San Jose Unified. Now, this um, partnership has been a bit of a dance of two steps forward and one step back. When I was brought on board to this project, there was a draft memorandum of understanding for a combined student ID library card for grades six through 12. We waited three months to see if the MOU would be approved. Unfortunately, it wasn't, but the new superintendent and board did express their desire to strengthen the relationship with the library. So they proposed including the paper library card application with their registration packet for the 2017-2018 school year. 
In terms of responsibilities, the school district would vet and scan the library card applications and the library would create and distribute the cards. So we expected to distribute 169 cards. Now we met with 51 students, but only one, only one student came to pick up their library card. So yeah, <laughs> a bit disappointing. So what happened? So what happened was that the students had a to-do checkoff list and the library wasn't on it. So um, the main primary thing that we learned was that it's absolutely essential and necessary for the library to be scheduled as a stop for class registration day. Also, we had our branch ILS laptop so we could create cards on the spot as well as renew cards. Um, and we found that we were kept getting kicked off of the Wi-Fi for the school's Wi-Fi. So that and bringing a scanner would also be, would be more efficient. And scheduling a little bit more time. It was myself and two other staff members on that class registration day. So we still had 168 cards to distribute. Um, how are we going to do this? So what my staff and I did was come up with some talking points for the advisory slash homeroom teacher to say to their students. And um, that was what we did. And that's just a sample. We can borrow it. <laughs> um, so there's been a couple of hurdles that we've had. But San Jose Unified School District and San Jose Public Library have the shared goal of making sure that we refine these processes and procedures to a point that they can be replicated throughout the school district. So if you're starting a school partnership, make sure that you review the Pacific Library Partnership Student Success Toolkit for Ideas. Know that successes and challenges are part of the process. Also know that key decision makers and stakeholders can change. Uh, when, I was, when I started on this project, the superintendent had just changed the summer of 2016. And um, recently, my key contact at San Jose Unified, who's been there for many years, um, uh, informed me that he, he would be leaving. Also identify and connect with all of the key people needed for that library card distribution. And lastly, make sure you have a variety of talking points for all of the different audiences, whether it's parents, administrators, and the students. That's it. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Lana Lawen, uh, supervising librarian for teen services with the Oakland Public Library, and I just want to say thanks uh, for PLP for having me and the Oakland Public Library here today. Um, it's been really wonderful to see so many familiar faces um, in the audience that I haven't seen for a while. Um, so as Nancy shared, sort of San Jose's iteration of the project, uh, I'm going to share Oakland's version uh, and what's working for our school district and community. Um, two of the key staff members working on this project with me are Nina Lindsay, Head of Children's Services for the Oakland Public Library, and also Amy Cheney, who is our district librarian. Um, so our model whoops, is a student ID, joint student ID library card. Um, so you can see the front of the card has the school district, student picture, student name, year of enrollment, school, and then a, a barcode specific to OUSD on the front. On the back of the card we have, we tried to make it look like a library card, uh, and it has a public library barcode on the back. Uh, for our school district, they use these badges differently at each school site. Uh, so some schools use it for attendance, for lunch service. Uh, with the OUSD barcode on the front, they can actually check out books from their school campuses. With the public library barcode on the back, they can immediately access our online resources in the classroom. And wish list someday is that maybe this will be a full service card for students. So could we add transit to this card and really make it an ess essential part of their school career? Uh, for our school district, the student keeps their student ID number the entire time they're in that school district. Uh, so for the public library barcode on the back, we embedded that student ID number into the barcode. Uh, we know, I'm sure many of you know that you work with teens and kids, that they can remember a 14-digit number 
super easily. I cannot. Um, so we hope by that combination of keeping an essential item in their school career, like the student ID number, into the public library barcode, um, that they can access our resources pretty easily with that support. Um, the name of our project is called the Oakland Promise Card. Uh, and we've connected um, our st uh, student ID library card with a larger city initiative called the Oakland Promise, which is really a cradle co to career um, student success initiative for the city at large. Uh, the mayor's office and the district superintendent are fully behind the Oakland Promise card and the Oakland Promise initiative. And if you wanted to find out more about the Oakland Promise or check out some of the FAQs that we've created uh, for this card, please check out um, either of the sites listed on the slide. As Nancy shared, uh, in San Jose, they have to work with multiple school districts, which can be uh, very challenging. Uh, we in Oakland are lucky to work with only one school district. Um, but with the school district, we're hoping to reach about 123 schools and then issue 50,000 library cards to students. This is our dream. Um, we have a memorandum of understanding with the school district to centrally share data. Um, and a key part of this program is that the cards will be directly delivered to the students at their school sites. Um, we rolled out an elementary school last spring and are currently working towards adding middle and high school this fall, along with a few other school sites. We'd like to be farther along uh, than we are in this and have been working on this project for a few years, uh, but we'll get there someday, um, and all of you will too. As part of this uh, support partnership with the school district, Oakland Public Library staff are offering professional development sessions. Uh, for each school community that we roll the cards at. So we're really working closely with teachers and school library staff to immediately connect the online resources that we have directly into their classroom curriculum. And a larger wonderful thing for Oakland um, that we're really fortunate uh, to have is the support of our city council. Uh, we recently went before city council a few years ago to ask that um, for youth library cards 18 and under that they have no fines or fees. Uh, we worked super hard as a system with staff um, to look at our circulation policies, uh, reduce our replacement fee costs, and really trim those barriers to access for all of our patrons, not only young people in the city. So reaching beyond just the numbers of issuing 50,000 library cards to students, why are we doing this sometimes really frustrating project? Um, the number one reason is access, uh, especially in Oakland, it's hard for students and families to get to the library, uh, either because of our hours or transportation or the cost of transportation. Uh, so with this model, um, we want to make it easy for them to use the library, and that means giving them the card in their hand and also the knowledge of how to use that card. Um, there's no downside to having stronger school and library connections. Uh, at school sites, we can reach students that are not walking through the doors of our library and also share in that um, joint effort to really ensure student success in the community. And then staff support. We want our staff working with students and teachers. We don't want the, their, their valuable time and, and not a lot of time spent issuing library cards. So how can we make this easier for them every year? Uh, and part of that is sharing the data with OUSD. And lastly, uh, really connecting this partnership to the larger citywide initiative of the Oakland Promise. Um, it was mentioned several times during the day so far about bringing the library to that community table, that, that city conversation about our essential services and resources. We know, I think Michael Figueroa said, that uh, libraries are a, a fundamental part of the education process, and we all know that. Uh, so these kind of partnerships really work to, again, bring the library to the table, highlight our resources, and really say that the value that we're providing every day to kids and teens after school uh, is truly making a difference. Thank you.